Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a short series of videos in which I thought I'd do something slightly different. And it has appeared to me over the last couple of um, years, particularly this year actually, there is a whole range of things that we don't really discuss or teach when we teach A-level law and even law at degree level. And we sort of expect students just to automatically know these things. And I've noticed it's made a massive difference to my students this year by just spending a little bit of time talking about some basic legal skills. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna offer a short series of videos in which we look at some of these skills and I'm hoping that they will be certainly applicable if you're doing the AQA syllabus to unit one um, in uh, parliamentary lawmaking and delegated legislation and statutory interpretation. But regardless of that, they should see you throughout your course because I don't think it's something that we we spend a great deal of time looking at. And certainly once you understand some of these basic, simple legal concepts, understanding the greater depth of law becomes much easier. So in this first series, I'm going to look at how we read an Act of Parliament. How um, I'm gonna go through terminology, I'm gonna go through structure, I'm gonna go through definitions, I'm going to link enabling acts to secondary legislation so as you can see how the two work together and how they complement one another um, and hopefully that will then give you some ideas about um, wh when you're discussing those sorts of legislation how they work and I want to start you'll, you'll see on these videos I've put a number of um, images of acts of parliament to be able to use as examples but it is well worth you going to the relevant locations to download your own acts and practice them for yourself. And certainly, if you um, subscribe to the Law Bank website, then on there, there will be a number of activities which will help you to do just that. It will tell you which ones to download and it will set you some tasks and activities to help you to um, understand what we've done in these short videos. So, let's start with the two places in which you can obtain legislation. Firstly, of course, the best thing to do is write the title of the act that we talk about in Google. And if you do that, Google will certainly direct you to here. All right, and this is quite simple. It's just www.legislation.gov.uk. Uh, you can go direct to the legislation.gov.uk website and you can enter the title of the act that you want to find in here. And I will demonstrate to you, we'll have a look at finding legislation in a secondary video. The other place that I frequently use is the British and Irish Legal Institute, Information Institute, and that is um, often called um, Bailey I. This isn't that. And if you have a look, the website is in effect www.bailey.org. And here you can search not only for legislation, but you can also look for cases. And Bailey has generally most of the major cases, full texts. So as when your teachers say to you, for instance, R versus Brown, you can go and look at the RV Brown judgment in full on the Bailey website. So those are the two places I genuinely suggest that you download the acts that we look at and you have a copy. Um, they're completely free. Um, and, and that will enable you to go back time and time again to look at some of these things. So let's get started then. And let's look at this piece of legislation. Now, this piece of legislation is the year and a day, or the Law Reform Year and a Day Rule Act 1996. You don't really need to know the content because that's not what we're doing. But just as background, the Year and a Day Rule was an ancient rule that prevented killers being convicted of murder if their victim survived for a year and a day after the original offence. In modern terms, recognising that modern me medical techniques um, and technology can often prolong life for substantial periods after initial attack, the Year and a Day Rule was abolished by this Act, the Law Reform Year and a Day Rule Act 1996. As I said, I'm not concerned that you know the content of this, this act. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to use this very short act. You'll see that there is only, um, there are two pages. So this is a two page act. So it's nice and short and brilliant for getting your head around. 
Um, so what I'm concerned about is the makeup of this piece of legislation. Remember, I'm just looking at structure and terminology today. The first thing to think about is the name of the Act. And the name of the Act can be found here. And it's officially called the Short Title. Right, so the name of the Act is always under the Crown and it's called the Short Title. In this instance, the Short Title of this Act is the Law Reform Year and a Day Rule Act 1996. Below that, we find the official citation. Okay, and in this instance, uh, the official citation says 1996 chapter 19, and that means that it was the 19th Act to be enacted in or passed in 1996. The next thing that we have is what's known as the long title. This is the long title. And the long title comes immediately below the official citation. Here, the long title says that it is an act to abolish the year and a day rule and in consequence of its abolition to impose a restriction on the institution in certain circumstances of proceedings for a fatal offence. Now, the long title, as you'll notice, will become really important for us when we look at statutory interpretation and judicial creativity. Here, we've got the date, and this is the date of royal assent. So this is the day that the Act passes into law. So the date of, um, the date of enactment, and it's known as the royal, of, royal assent. So the Law Reform Year and a Day Rule Act 1996 came into being on the 17th of June 1996. Here, we have something fascinating. It's called the enacting formula. And the enacting formula introduces the main provisions of the Act. Now, the normal wording is precisely this, be it enacted by the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Lords Spiritual and Temporal and Commons in this present Parliament assembled, and by the authority of the same as follows. What's interesting about this is that it talks about the Lords, and then it talks about the Commons, which in effect make up the two Houses of Parliament. I just want to move forward and just look and give you a different example. And let's take a look at the Hunting Act. You've got the short title, which is the Hunting Act. You've got the official citation that wrongly, which is chapter 37 of 2004. So it's the 37th act to come into power in 2004. You've got the long title, which is an act to make provision about hunting wild mammals with dogs to prohibit hair coursing and for connected purposes. You've got the date of royal assent. And then you have the enacting formula. Now, why have I demonstrated or why have I shown you the Hunting Act? Because on the face of it, the enacting formula looks the same. But if you look closely, you will see that the enacting formula says it's been enacted by the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty by and with the advice and consent of the Commons. What's missing is the Lord's Spiritual and the Lord's Temporal. And the reason for this is that the Hunting Act 2004 is one of the rare statutes passed under the Parliament's Acts of 1911 and 1945, where the House of Commons forces the legislation through the, uh, through the Parliament, despite opposition from the House of Lords. Most statutes are passed, as we've already seen, with both Lords and Commons. And they'll have the other formula that we've seen here. So you can see straight away that there's a difference in the enacting formula and it tells you the process that will have been gone through in order for this to achieve royal assent. Now, 
The next thing that you sometimes see is something known as a preamble. And preambles are seen on older pieces of legislation. So let's just write that down, but there's not one. There's not a preamble in the Law Reform Year in a Day Rule Act. But what we do have is a preamble in the Parliament Act. And this is the preamble. Okay? And the preamble provides a description of the purpose of the Act. And it's usually in a more comprehensive form than the long title. So you've got the short title, we'll do the thing again. Short title. You've got the official citation. You've got the long title. You've got the date of royal assent. And now, because it's an old act, you have the preamble. And when evaluating a piece of legislation with a preamble, it may be useful to ascertain if the courts have in fact given effect to Parliament's intentions by comparing judgments delivered by the courts with the wordings in the preamble. OK, so let's now go back across to our Law, Day, Law Reform Year in a Day Rule Act. What comes next is the main body. This is the main body of the Act. Now, it's, this one's longer than this. It's two pages long, so I've only given you the front page. But this is the main body. And the main body of the statute is divided into a number of different parts. The first part are sections. And these are sections. And each section will have a heading. OK, so a section with an, which is a number, and each section will have a heading. And the section headings are meant to give a summary of what that section is about. This is not always clear, but nevertheless, it gives you some idea of precisely what that section is going to be about. Now, the next thing that we need to look at is what happens and how do we refer to these um, subsidiary parts of a section? Well, the next area are known as subsections. So the one in the bracket is a subsection. Okay. Where we have then the letter that will be a paragraph and underneath that sometimes I've not shown one here you would have a sub paragraph so what you might have is one then a one in brackets then an a and then you might have a little one and that would be the section, the subsection, the paragraph, and the sub-paragraph. So when we're referring to Acts of Parliament together, if we were going to talk about this one here that says the injury alleged to have caused the death, then we would say that this is section 2, Subsection 2, paragraph A. This one here that says murder, manslaughter and infanticide would be section 2, subsection 3, paragraph A. All right, and it's worth practicing that out with friends, just sort of with other, other students. Just ask them to try to find, you give them the section, subsection, paragraph and subparagraph and get them to find what it is that you are referring to. Now, some Acts of Parliament have schedules. And what I've done, and schedules are genuine at the back. So you've got the front page here of the Hunting Act, but you've also got right at the very Act, right at the very back of the Hunting Act 2004, you've got the first of the schedules. There are actually three schedules in the Hunting Act. And these will always come at the end of the Act. 
And what normally they include are things like definitions, explanations, detailed provisions. We'll have a look at this one in a minute. So detailed provisions, details of amendments, and details of repeal. So here you can see that um, Schedule 1 talks about what do we mean by stalking and flushing out. All right, And there, here you can see it lists exactly what we are trying to prevent serious damage from. Livestock, game birds, crops, growing timber, so on and so forth. So well, it's, it's a little bit like a glossary. Schedules are frequently like a glossary. And often when words are used in the main act, it's useful then to go to the schedule because the schedule frequently will tell you what some of the words in that act means. Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about in this one. We've talked about the structure and terminology. There are lots and lots of different areas of, of Acts of Parliament that I want to go over with you. But for now, that's going to be it. Remember, you should be able to now identify the short title, the official citation, the long title, what date it gained royal assent, a preamble if it's an old piece of legislation, the main body, oh, and the enacting formula, and also how the, the naming convention works, as in sections, subsections, paragraph, and subparagraphs. In the next video, we'll start to look at some of the other key parts of um, a, 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 an Act of Parliament.